Hey guys, today I'll be talking about a game that I played for the first time in 2012 that really blew me away. It's another one of those games where you can't play just once. L.A. Noir is a video game by Rockstar Games and Team Bondi, released in early 2011 for the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and Steam. A new type of city, based not on the man, but on the automobile, the car, the symbol of freedom and vitality. It is a third-person action game set in 1947 Los Angeles, two years after World War II. This game spans one Blu-ray disc on the PlayStation 3 and three DVDs on the Xbox. Up on the roof, officer, he has a mask on his face. I caught sight when he shoved past me, but be careful, I saw him waving a gun. L.A. Noir is about the protagonist Cole Phelps, who recently joins the LAPD after returning from the war. He is deemed a war hero and rises quickly through the ranks of the LAPD. He starts by investigating robberies on the streets to murders and arson. Here's your new desk, kid. You're on traffic. The hot sheet is posted here next to the map. What's his problem? That's Biggs. He's an institution. He begins as a patrol cop, then gets promoted to work traffic cases, then on to the real detective work of homicide, drugs, and arson. He meets many people. All are different and make each case interesting and hard to stop playing. So let me put it in ruder terms that even a pair of blockheads like you might understand. The only reason that you don't have bars on your windows already is because you're small fry. And we don't waste our time on small fry. You stay away from Bishop, and you stay away from me. Is that clear enough for you, asshole? Each case begins with little information about who the victims are or who the killer is. Sometimes we are given a video of the crime actually being committed. What have we got? New case. White female dumped in plain sight in the grass at the end of Hill Street. Hats are all over it. Captain's trying to fend them off. Cases are always started at the police station, where Cole and his partner are briefed about the case. They drive to the crime scene and investigate all clues and interrogate any witnesses. This leads Cole to a possible suspect or more clues. Many of the cases are connected, either by same killer, same motive, or same cause of death. It is a fun fact that most of the homicide cases in the game were inspired by actual murders. If I killed every wife to serve me papers, I'd be a mass murderer. The plot to L.A. Noir. Think of it as a cake with a lot of layers. Each layer represents a different case. Each case is broken up into its very own story, while the frosting on top of the cake that drips down onto the other layers is the story going on behind the scenes that comes to a head during the second half of the game, which is told through the newspaper scattered across the game, and flashbacks from the war that is experienced between cases. Clean this rifle. No. Do you know the penalty for insubordination, Kelso? Jack, don't do it. Forget him, Hank. He doesn't have what it takes. Are you two finished? Are you going to clean this rifle? No, Sergeant. Cole is right. I'm going to stop playing games and join a rifle company and fight the real enemy. One of the most charismatic parts of the game is LA itself. You are roaming the streets of a fully recreated Los Angeles of 1947. No stone has been left unturned. The atmosphere, music, and dialogue all are recreated perfectly to reflect the golden age of Americana. Greetings from sunny California. Stop. During the game, Cole must interrogate witnesses and suspects. Interrogations is where the game is different from any other. You must determine what the people say is either the truth, a lie, or you have doubt in what they say. It all depends on what they say and how they say it. Put everything I had into that house, and my fucking mud shark of a wife gets awarded in settlement. She's blowing spicks two at a time while I'm at work, and she gets the house. Yeah, I burnt it all right. Set fire to that fucker and watch it burn to the ground. I did my time and I'd do it again. Sorry about the Ross, Clemens. You did the right thing. Using revolutionary technology called motion scan, actors' faces are digitally pasted onto the characters, making it the most realistic facial features to appear in video game. Some people are very easy to figure out whether they are lying or not. Some are not so easy. Truths are pretty easy to figure out. The lies and doubts are a bit more harder. The way to go around this is if you think they are lying, but you don't have any evidence, you choose doubt. 
You can choose to doubt what they say. It's also a way to get more information, if you're only given half the story. If you think they are lying, you must have evidence you have found already to help back up what you have chosen. If not, you will just look foolish. I am not now, nor have I ever been, a member of the Communist Party. Nice try, copper. To make the game more enjoyable, I would recommend finding a guide online to help you during the questioning and looking for clues. Yes, this might ruin the game for some, but you should be playing this game for the story. Also, if you are like me and do not enjoy driving simulations in video games, you can always make your partner drive. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. You will miss out on the street crime calls, but don't worry because... After getting promoted from any desk, you unlock the ability to free roam any completed sections of the game. For example, free roam during the homicide desk. This is for any street level cases you may have missed during the playthrough. As well, you can find rare cars that are only accessible during this moment in the game. Speaking of cars, finding all the cars for the achievement is a pain in the ass. Thankfully, if you have synced your profile with the free Rockstar Social Club, you can track everything from which clues you have gotten or missed, the film reels, street crimes, monuments, and of course, the car collection. Cut the crap. You pick me up in front of my apartment like a common criminal and then expect small talk? Fuck you. The aforementioned street crimes are varied and give you a taste of every action gameplay element presented in L.A. Noir like shootouts at bank heists, hostage situations, fist fights, and chasing people. Also, there are random mini-games throughout the main story, like crane operating, puzzles, and tailing people in cars and on foot. This game is great. It is not for anyone looking for something hardcore. If you are interested in getting into video games, this is a step up from the games you find on mobile devices. It is not that intimidating to pick up and play. And just like any other Rockstar game, the story is outstanding. But there are some people that will be turned off from this game just because of the setting. Some people cannot get into this time period, and some people will love it. I honestly had no opinion before playing this game. But now, I am very interested in the 40s and 50s of American history. So, L.A. Noir was a really good game. It's a shame what happened behind the scenes during the development. Hopefully, it's not going to be the last of its kind. I'm Agent Dougie, and thanks for watching.